Hello everybody and welcome to our series on 200 most popular idioms in English language. In this lesson, we shall help you learn important idioms with the help of interesting pictorials, meanings, stories and example sentences. These idioms are known to feature regularly in the English section of almost all competitive exams such as SSC, Bank PO, CAT and other MBA entrances. CSAT, company recruitment tests, exams after plus two, and so on. So that you may bookmark and cover the idioms at your own pace, we have divided the entire content into small sections covering 10 idioms each. On your screen are the 10 idioms that we are going to discuss in this section of our video lesson. And yes, don't forget to watch the other 3 lessons in this series. Idiom number 51 is Back to Square 1. While no one is sure about the origin of this idiom, it is guessed to have originated from football commentaries on radio where to promote a better visualization of the game, the field was divided into eight numbered squares, which were rather rectangles, and back to square one meant back to the original square or original position. So, if you're back to square one, you have to start working on a plan from the beginning, because your previous attempt failed and the progress you made is now wasted. An example sentence is, Alas, I lost my laptop bag on the train back to Delhi and all the project work stored in that laptop is gone. So we are back to square one. Apple of one's eye. In Old English, the pupil of the eye, the round dark center, was called the apple. It was thought that the pupil was a round object much like an apple. When you look at someone, their reflection appears in your pupil. So if someone is the apple of your eye, he or she is someone that you look at a lot and enjoy seeing. So the idiom means the favorite or the most beloved person. An example sentence is, her granddaughter is the apple of her eye. Idiom number 53 is hook, line and sinker. This idiom means completely and is based on the idea of a fish so hungry that it swallows the hook, the part that catches the fish, the line, the string and the sinker, a weight attached to the line to keep it under water. An example sentence is, the so-called world traveler cooked up such a convincing account of his journeys to different places around the globe that we fell for it, hook, line and sinker. A similar idiom is lock, stock and barrel. This phrase derives from muskets. The effective portions of a gun are the lock used to hold ready the sparking mechanism, the stock or the portion which is held and the barrel being the aiming guide and conveyor for the explosive driven ball. Collectively, they are the weapon. Therefore, everything. The idiom means all, total, the whole thing. An example sentence is, My father got transferred and we had to move everything to our new house, lock, stock and barrel. Idiom number 55 is, Tongue in one's cheek. This phrase alludes to the facial expression, created by putting one's tongue in one's cheek. It means to talk insincerely or ironically. The best example is elections time, when most of the politicians simply make tongue-in-cheek promises to the voters. Next idiom is to have a card up your sleeve, which originates from the world of gambling. When a card player has a card up his sleeve, he is hiding an extra card, usually a powerful one, like an ace, in his shirt sleeve, waiting to use it to win a hand in gambling. So the idiom means 
to have a surprise plan or idea that you're keeping back until the time is right. An example sentence would be, at the speed with which our company is burning money, in the coming months, it might not even have enough funds to pay our salaries unless the management has a card up its sleeve. From the same context of gambling, we have another popular idiom to lay one's cards on the table. This idiom alludes to laying playing cards on the table, face up, showing the cards. And hence the idiom means to be very honest or candid about one's position on some issue. An example would be a couple having a conversation like, Now that we have been dating for an year, let's lay our cards on the table and discuss the future of this relationship. Our next idiom is devil's advocate. Well, talking about advocates or lawyers, they generally take their client's side. So a devil's advocate will supposedly take the less popular side of the devil, even though he might or might not agree with it personally. The phrase devil's advocate thus refers to a person who expresses an opinion that disagrees with that of the majority so that there will be an interesting discussion about that issue. An example sentence would be, Teachers often play the role of devil's advocate in classrooms to promote a healthy discussion covering all aspects of an issue. Idiom number 55 is to cut corners. The first image that comes to your mind when you hear it is probably that of scissors cutting a piece of paper or cloth. But as a matter of fact, to cut corners is a metaphor from driving. When you come to a sharp turn in the road, instead of going all the way to the corner and then turning, if you go diagonally across, you cut the corner off. This might save time but entails several risks such as clipping the curb and overturning or being involved in a pileup with another vehicle. Thus, to cut corners means to discard normal safe practice in order to get fast results. That is, if you try to do something in the easiest, quickest or cheapest way, which probably harms the quality of your work, you are said to have cut corners. And there is a certain disapproving connotation attached to the phrase. For instance, the director tried to make this film on such a small budget that he had to cut corners on several occasions. And the last idiom in this section is to hear it on the grapevine. This phrase was an allusion to interactions amongst people who could be expected to be found amongst grapevines, that is, the rural poor. Such close communities had effective word-of-mouth communications and so, any piece of information passed on rapidly from one person to another, very much like a chain or an extended grapevine. And so, the idiom on the grapevine refers to any piece of information that you have received through or via an informal means of communication, especially gossip. The phrase is often used at workplaces nowadays and an example would be, I heard on the grapevine that Radha has put in her papers. Moving on to section 7. The next 10 idioms are there on your screen. Idiom number 61 is to wear your heart on your sleeve. Heart, as we all know, has long been associated with feelings or emotions. So if someone wears his heart on his sleeves, he is expressing his emotions freely and openly for everyone around to see. For instance, Rajiv is very open about his crushes on the female colleagues. As his friends say, he wears his heart on his sleeve. Our 62nd idiom is to take a leaf out of someone's book. This idiom alludes to 
tearing a page from a book and such a leaf would probably highlight the best part of the book something you are impressed with so the idiom means to imitate or follow someone's example for example a child who is too impressed with say einstein might want to be a scientist one day that is to say he is taking a leaf out of einstein's book another example would be riya took a page out of her mother's book and decided to quit her job and be a full time mother to her kids just as her mother was idiom number 63 is to whitewash it literally means to paint or coat something like a wall or a fence or some other structure with a whitewash which in turn is a mixture of lime and water often with whiting or glue added to it now just like whitewashing covers up the shabby looks and conceals defects the phrase to whitewash figuratively means to conceal or gloss over a flaw or a failure or a wrong doing for example although a committee was appointed to investigate the scandal many big names are involved and so people feel that its report would be a whitewash of the culprits a next idiom is the last straw the phrase is also used in the form of the proverb it is the last straw that breaks the camel's back the expression originates from an arabian fable in which a camel's owner loaded the beast with as much burden as possible still not satisfied he further added just one last piece of straw even that one wisp was too much and the animal collapsed with a broken back leaving the owner with no way to take his goods to the market so the phrase implies the last of a series as of events or indignities that brings one beyond the point of endurance or patience an example would be vishal had endured the atrocities of his boss for years but the last straw came when his boss called him a useless fool in front of his colleagues and he decided to quit our 65th idiom is to take the bull by its horns the phrase is an easy one and it is based on the idea that holding a bull which is a male cow by its horns is a brave and direct action so the idiom means to confront a problem head on and deal with it openly for example the wife decided that it was time to take the bull by its horns and confront her husband in order to correct his excessive drinking habits our next idiom is one swallow does not make summer the phrase is an allusion to the return of migrating swallows at the start of the summer season the first known use is a remark by aristotle one swallow does not a summer make nor one fine day the idiom is used to emphasize that one instance of an event such as arrival of a single bird might be one off and does not necessarily indicate a trend an example sentence would be just because the actor's debut movie has done well we can't really say that his upcoming films will be a big hit for that we will have to wait and watch because one swallow does not make a summer our next idiom is a red letter day The phrase comes from the practice of highlighting holidays and festivals in red on a calendar and as opposed to routine days holidays are associated with fun and are memorable so the idiom a red letter day is used to indicate a special happy important and memorable day like i can say that the day i set my foot in paris my dream destination was a red letter day for me taking this association of red color further we have the idiom paint the town red since red color means festivities the idiom means to go out and celebrate and one instance that comes to my mind where people literally paint the town red is the la tomatina festival held in spain 
where the participants throw tomatoes at each other and totally enjoy themselves. Next we have the idiom, let sleeping dogs lie. Well, all of us know what would happen if we try to wake up a beast before it has had a good sleep. So the idiom, let sleeping dogs lie is a warning not to instigate trouble. The idiom is used when one should not talk about a bad situation or try to change it because it might cause problems. For example, the lawyer wanted to open up an old case against the politician but citing the example of so many witnesses who were silenced, his partner advised him to let the sleeping dogs lie. Our next expression is to have a taste of one's own medicine or to have a dose of one's own medicine. The expression uses the idea that medicines are generally bitter and it's easier to administer them to others than to have them yourself. And so the idiom to have a taste of your own medicine is used when someone receives a sample of the same unpleasant experience that he has been giving to other people which shows him how bad it is. An example sentence would be, he got a taste of his own medicine when his class teacher who had been observing how he bullies others and calls them names treated him rudely in the class. Moving on to section 8, the next 10 idioms to be covered are there on your screen. The first idiom in this section is to steal someone's thunder. This idiom has a very interesting story behind it. In the 17th century, the writer John Dennis built a machine for one of his plays which made sounds like thunder. But the idea was copied by someone else and used in another play. So the idiom to steal someone's thunder means to do what someone else was planning to do before they do it, especially if this takes success or praise away from them. For example, on her wedding day, the bride had expected to look the most beautiful. But when Rita walked into that room, all eyes were fixed on her. Rita stole the bride's thunder and spoiled her day. Similarly, at workplaces, if someone steals your ideas and gets credit for it himself, you would say that that guy has stolen your thunder. Idiom number 72 is dyed in the wool. The idiom originates from the practice of dyeing wool. When a color is dyed in the wool, the wool itself is dyed before being spun into threads. So the color is least likely to fade or change. If someone is dyed in the wool or has dyed in the wool beliefs or opinions, they hold those opinions strongly and will not change them. For example, my grandfather is a dyed in the wool miser and hates to spend money on anything except for utilities. 73rd idiom is to cast pearls before a swine. This expression originated from Bible, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine. And as we can expect, a swine would not really appreciate the value of those pearls. So the idiom figuratively means to waste something good on someone who does not care about it. For example, the family we invited over for dinner had a taste only for Indian food. So serving continental delicacies to them was like casting pearls before a swine. 74th idiom is draconian code. The phrase originates from Draco, an Athenian statesman and lawmaker in the 7th century BC whose written code of laws prescribed death for almost every offence, including minor ones. So draconian measures or draconian law is generally talked about in context of punishment which is unusually severe or cruel and harsh. For example, the draconian measures taken by the police in controlling the demonstrators 
were criticized by one and all, which means everyone. Seventy-fifth idiom is to get a leg up. The phrase refers to the act of an equestrian, which means the rider of a horse, receiving help in mounting a horse. So, if someone gets a leg up, he gets a boost or advantage from some source. An example would be, with the recession in U.S. economy, it would have been difficult for him to find a job on his own. But a distant relative who was working in an MNC gave him a leg up and helped him get his first job. Next, we have the idiom "out of one's depth." This idiom refers to water that is so deep that it goes over your head when you are standing, and so, unless you know how to swim, you might drown. So, if one is out of one's depth, one does not have the knowledge, experience, or skills to deal with a particular subject or situation. For example, when the boss asks the new recruit to work on the financials of a company on MS Excel, it gave her jitters as she knew she was out of her depth on this task. Idiom number seventy-seven is once in a blue moon. Some people say. Is the second full moon in a calendar month, which appears blue. So it's a very rare occasion. Though originally the notion of blue moon was considered not rare, but impossible and absurd, very much like pigs might fly. The contemporary meaning of the idiom "once in a blue moon" is very rarely. An example sentence would be: The politician once elected. Visited his constituency only once in a blue moon. Idiom number seventy-eight is to paddle one's own canoe. Well, a canoe is a light, narrow boat which is propelled with the help of a paddle. If someone paddles his or her own canoe, it means he or she is independent and does not need help from anyone else. An example would be countries like America, where most of the kids leave their parents' home right after school and learn to paddle their own canoe. Next idiom is to know the ropes. Well, literally, it would mean that a person knows a lot about ropes. However, figuratively, it implies something else. The expression is an 18th century idiom. Which alludes to sailors learning the rigging so as to handle a sailing vessel's ropes. So, if someone knows the ropes, he is fully informed about the details of a situation or task. That is, he is acquainted with the procedures. An example sentence would be: Don't worry, having trained with his father on the job, Sanjeev already knows the ropes and will perform well in his role as the managing director. The last idiom in this section is straight from the horse's mouth. This idiom originated from the horse racing circles, where tips on which horse is likely going to win circulate among punters. The most trusted authorities are considered to be those in closest touch with the recent form of the horse, that is, stable lads, trainers, etc. The notional from the horse's mouth. Is supposed to indicate information that is one step better than even that of inner circle, that is the horse itself. So the idiom means from the highest authority. For instance, in today's session, students get to meet the CEO of Amazon and learn the principles of online marketing straight from the horse's mouth. We move on to section nine of this lesson. And the next ten idioms to be covered in this section are there on your screen. Our eighty-first idiom is a lick and a promise. Well, the word lick in this phrase uses a slightly different meaning than that in the phrase licking a lollipop. The word lick is informally used to mean 
to apply a light coating or quick application of something, especially paint. For example, you have the sentence, she needed to give the kitchen a lick of paint. So lick means to do something in a hasty and superficial manner. An example sentence is, she had to rush for her dentist appointment, so she gave the cleaning job a lick and a promise. Idiom number 82 is in apple pie order. The phrase is believed to have originated from the French nappe plie, which means neatly folded and it got distorted over time to apple pie order. The idiom means neat and well ordered. For instance, she is a perfectionist and likes to keep her desk and office cabin in apple pie order. Next idiom is at sixes and sevens. The origin of this idiom is believed to be dice games and the earliest known phrase was to settle the world on sixes and sevens, which means to risk everything on a bet or on gambling. As happens in a bet, till a point where the outcome is known, it is an unresolved situation and there exists a state of confusion or uncertainty which is what this idiom means. For example, ever since he failed in his attempt at clearing SSC, he has been at sixes and sevens about his career. Spill the beans. It is said that in ancient Greece, there was a unique voting system from which this idiom is derived. The story goes that people used to vote with beans and white beans indicated positive votes and black beans negative. Votes had to be unanimous. So if the collector spilled the beans before the vote was complete, the result of the secret vote was out prematurely. So the phrase to spill the beans means to disclose a secret or reveal something prematurely. For example, we were planning a surprise birthday party for dad but mom accidentally spilled the beans. A similar idiom is to let the cat out of the bag, although the origin is quite different. One of the suggested origins of this phrase is that in earlier days, people used to buy piglets from the market, which the merchants used to sell in sacks or bags or pokes, whatever you would like to call it. Sometimes, a dishonest merchant would commit a fraud by substituting a worthless cat for a valuable pig, which was discovered only when the buyer reached home and opened the bag. If you let the cat out of the bag, you disclose the trick. So to let the cat out of the bag means reveal a secret or surprise by accident. By the way, if you let the cat out of the bag, then you could have avoided buying a pig in a poke, which is our next idiom. As learnt in the previous idiom, if you buy a pig in a poke without having inspected it properly, you might end up disappointed with it later. I am sure many of you must have felt that way when you ordered something online and were not happy when you received it because you had expected something else entirely. For example, the air fryer that I purchased online started malfunctioning after three days only. My fault that I bought a pig in a poke. Idiom number 87 is highway robbery. If there is a highway robbery, you would probably end up losing everything on you. Your cash, your valuables and probably your life. So highway robbery means something that costs too much. If someone commits a highway robbery, he charges too much. For instance, some showrooms inflate the prices of the goods to an extent that the customer literally considers the transaction a highway robbery. Idiom number 88 To keep a stiff upper lip In body language, if someone's upper lip trembles, it is perceived as a sign of weakness. Hence the saying, keep a stiff upper lip. When a person's upper lip begins to tremble, it is one of the first signs that the person is scared 
or shaken by experiencing deep emotion on the other hand one who has a stiff upper lip displays courage in the face of adversity and stands up to trouble for example in the bond movies james bond is always stoic and keeps a stiff upper lip in the face of adversity our 89th idiom is to keep the pot boiling it is a self explanatory idiom that means to maintain the brisk momentum of something or to maintain an existing level of interest in something for example the new action series on tv has started with a good audience response as reflected in its trps but let's see if it is able to keep the pot boiling the last idiom in this section is a white elephant the term a white elephant implies a possession that is useless or troublesome especially one that is expensive to maintain or difficult to dispose of for instance this car of 1920s is like a white elephant it guzzles so much petrol and keeps standing in the garage all day we use it only during vintage car exhibitions and it is practically coming to our final section of 10 idioms idiom number 91 is a feather in one's cap back in the good old days wearing hats was a common custom and one would often place a feather in one's hat that symbolized one's achievements probably the children's rhyme yankee doodle went to town is the best known use of this phrase the idiom means an achievement to be proud of an example sentence to illustrate this meaning is an all-rounder throughout her schooling she added another feather in her cap when she was awarded the medal for the outstanding achiever at the graduation ceremony next idiom is at the drop of a hat in earlier days duels and races etc usually started at the drop of a hat or handkerchief which was used as a signal for go so to do something at the drop of a hat is to do it immediately without hesitation for instance sara was always ready to go for a movie at the drop of a hat idiom number 93 is an important one an ax to grind the phrase first finds mention in a book american statesman benjamin franklin mentioned an anecdote in his autobiography about a stranger who seemed interested in a smith's grindstone the worksmith demonstrated how it worked by sharpening the stranger's ax a task which required hard work This was clearly what the stranger had planned. So if someone has an ax to grind, he has a secret motive to do something. An example sentence is In today's world, it is very rare to find people who do charity for altruistic reasons. Behind most of the NGOs and charitable organizations, there are often people who have their own personal axes to grind. Talking about a grindstone a related idiom that is commonly used is to keep one's nose to the grindstone grindstone we know is a stone disc that can be turned like a wheel and is used for sharpening tools so if one keeps his nose to the grindstone he basically focuses on his work the idiom thus means to stay hard at work as an example I believe Raj would be able to complete the project on time as he really keeps his nose to the grindstone. Idiom number 95 is to jump on the bandwagon. The word bandwagon was coined in the USA in the mid 19th century simply as a name for the wagon that carried a circus band. The phrase jump on the bandwagon means to join with the majority. or to go along with the trend for instance in our country pressure from parents and peers causes a majority of students to jump on the bandwagon and take up 
either engineering or medical studies after 12th. Idiom number 96 is wolf in sheep's clothing. Now a wolf is supposedly a very sharp and cunning animal as opposed to a sheep which is meek and gentle. So a wolf in the garb of a sheep refers to a dangerous person who is pretending to be harmless. An example sentence to illustrate this meaning is Investigations revealed that the murder and robbery at the house was carried out by the maid with one of her accomplices. A highly trusted aide, she turned out to be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Idiom number 97 is a couch potato. If someone sits on a couch and does nothing but watch TV and eat all day long, his body will resemble a potato shape and such a person can aptly be called a couch potato. For instance, Raji watches TV all day long lying on his couch. So his friends call him a couch potato. Idiom number 98 is on pins and needles. This idiom refers to the state of agitation one would be in if he or she is sitting on pins and needles. So, to be on pins and needles means to be on edge or jumpy. An example sentence is Ever since Shikha read the news that the 12th board's result is expected tomorrow, she has been on pins and needles. Idiom number 99 is the lion's share. Well, the lion, king of the jungle, commands the largest share of a hunt. So the idiom lion's share means the biggest or the greatest part. For example, in today's world, the lion's share of the income goes to the branded consumer goods such as clothing, mobile phones, etc. And our last idiom in this lesson is by the skin of one's teeth. Now we know that there is hardly any skin on our teeth. The skin of the teeth probably refers to the primary enamel layer on our teeth which is very thin. So the phrase means by a very small amount or just barely. For example, I got to the railway station a few minutes late and missed the train by the skin of my teeth. So that completes this lesson. All the best for any exams that you might be preparing for. For a comprehensive coverage of this topic, do watch the other three lessons covering the rest of the 150 idioms. Hope you like this lesson. For any doubts or queries on this topic, please feel free to drop a comment on the video page. Alternatively, you may mail us your comments or feedback or any queries at aptispeak at the rate gmail.com. Subscribe our channel and stay tuned for more such videos. Thank you.